Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Daily Devotions with Pastor Sutton on this Thursday, December 8th. I'm glad you're all here with us on this Thursday. It's uh, neither overcast nor sunny outside today. But it is cold. Um, we were down in the single digits or even single negative digits last night. I, I, I think our thermometer here at the house never went that low into the negatives, but the um, weather service had us at two or three below last night, so brr. Um, but that's, you know, that's winter in Wisconsin. What are you going to do? You can't do much about it except be cold. So good morning. Glad you're here with us. No commemorations this morning, just a, a regular day. It is my day to be up at Faith in Harshaw this morning, but I don't have any stuff before getting there, so I got a little extra time to get going this morning, but I'm glad that you are spending a little time in God's Word with me. Let's see who all you are uh, that have at least chimed in here. Neil and Geraldine, good morning to you. Oop, then it goes and jumps on me. Neil and Geraldine, good morning. And uh, Jill and John, good morning to you guys. <laughs> Ashley, good morning. Michael, down there. You and Karen, good morning to you. Uh, 81. <laughs> hmm. You're such a suffer. Suffer. I hope you're sweating. I hope by the end of the day... No, I don't. That's not nice. You know, the advantage of being up here in the Northwoods, though, is uh, the bugs are dead. I don't have any mosquitoes right now. Uh, no mosquitoes, no uh, hornets, no bees, no uh, flies, um, no box elder bugs on the side of the house, no Asian uh, lady beetles. So snakes. Bonnie said no snakes. Now the snakes aren't dead. The snakes are just hibernating, but she's right. No snakes. Even the bears are uh, in bed right now. Yeah, if you ran across the snake right now, it wouldn't move very fast. Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you guys. I'm uh, I'm not going to go with better. Um, just my medicine has kicked in and I'm not running all over the place. Bonnie, good morning. There she is. See, she says it's 8 degrees. Um, yeah, she's doing trick Christmas cards. She started that yesterday. She ordered some cards last year to get ready for this year and showed me she had nice stuff. The return address was embossed right on the envelopes, which was kind of nice. Um I think when I was a wee little boy, um, that my, I want to say my, either my family or my grandmother provided our family, or maybe for me, I don't know. But I remember us having Christmas cards with the family name, or the names of the family embossed in on the card, um, back when that was a thing. Yeah, well, it is what it is. So, uh, let's, uh, let's get into our, uh, devotion this morning if you have the Lutheran service book page 295 daily prayer for individuals and families I have my da treasure daily prayer right here hey Deb and Grant and Anne, good morning to you guys all right in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen in the morning O Lord you hear my voice in the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch my mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning, uh, Psalm 11, in its entirety. You know, sometimes it would be fun... I don't know if it'd be practical, but it'd be, it'd be interesting to me to go through here and see how many times certain psalms are used, because it, 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 I have the perception, today, a lot of people would say I feel like, but I have the perception that Psalm 11 is used fairly regularly here. All right, Psalm 11. In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird from your mount, to your mountain? For behold, the wicked bend the bow they have fitted their arrow to the strong to the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart if the foundations are destroyed what can the righteous do the lord is in his holy temple the lord's throne is in heaven his eyes see his eyelids test the children of man 
The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Let him rain coals on the wicked. Fire and sulfur and scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hey, Mushtaq, good evening to you, brother. In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird to your mountain? Hmm. Well, okay. If I connect that with the next verse. In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird to your mountain? For behold, the wicked bend the bow. They fitted the arrow and uh, the string and shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. How, how can you say to me, Lord, uh, come from where you are to me? Uh, and and when, the, when the wicked are there, um, and they will attack me as I'm going. Hmm. I don't know. That's kind of what I took right there. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his temple, his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see, his eyelids test the children of man. Hmm. I should do a deeper study on this psalm. Not today. The Lord tests the righteous. But his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. I guess if his eyelids were to test, if his eyes see, but his eyelids test the children of man, he sees all things. Um, but you know, like the, like the, like the child playing in the living room when his father's taking a nap on the couch, his father's eyes are closed, but does his father not know what he's doing? And then he does something he ought not do and he finds out that the test, he did not pass. The eyelids of the father were not covering his eyes, but he saw all that the young man did. Hey, Neely, good morning to you, my friend. Uh, the Lord tests the righteous. Well, he does. The Lord tests us. He, he, he's, he's not a God who simply lets you slide through life. He does place tests before you. Uh, St. James would tell us, and of course we know that God tempts no one. He doesn't tempt, but he does allow the tempt, he does allow temptations to come. He is not the one who does them. They, they come from our fallen nature, from the old wicked foe, but he does allow them upon us uh, to test our mettle, if you will. You know, uh, even a, even a, even somebody producing something, if they're making something solid, tests it to make sure that it's that it's right, right? The, 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 the jeweler, I'll take a jeweler, tests the quality of the gold that they're using so that they know that they're using the gold that they were sold and the gold that they were that they want to use, right? When you when you make a ring, it has to have certain carrots and, and certain durability. If you're building a, a bridge, you, you test the the cement, the concrete that you're using to build the bridge with to make sure that it has the uh, withholds or withstands the compression forces and the weight and the angles. Um, or you at least look them up on a chart. So we are tested. Our our faith is tested, right? Um, but with the testing comes always a way out, right? In Christ, we endure all things. Um, if we remain faithful, then he gets us through the test. Um, if, but if we aren't, then, well, so be it. But the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The up, up, upright shall behold his face. And we are righteous and upright, not by, 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 not by the things that we do, but by, by being faithful in Christ who imputes righteousness to us. All right, let's go on to our reading here. Um, still in Isaiah, 
picking up where we left off yesterday, chapter 24, verse 14 now, through 25, 12. Um, when we left off yesterday, we were reading of the, really of the final judgment of, of the destruction of all things that will come, and we're continuing with that today in 24, 14. They lift up their voices, they sing for joy. Over the majesty of the Lord, they shout from the west. Therefore, in the east, give glory to the Lord. In the coastlands of the sea, give glory to the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. From the ends of the earth, we hear songs of praise, of glory to the righteous one. But I say, I waste away. I waste away, woe is me. For the traitors have betrayed. With betrayal, the traitors have betrayed. Terror and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of earth. He who flees at the sound of the terror shall fall into the pit. And he who climbs out of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For the windows of heaven are opened and the foundations of the earth tremble. The earth is utterly broken. The earth is split apart. The earth is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunken man. It sways like a hut. Its transgression lies heavy upon it, and it falls and will not rise again. On that day, the Lord will punish the host of heaven and heaven, and the kings of the earth on earth. They will be gathered together as prisoners in a pit. They will be shut up in a prison, and after many days they will be punished. Then the moon will be confounded, and the sun ashamed. For the Lord of hosts reigns on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, and his glory will be before his elders. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The foreigner's palace is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in his distress, a shelter from the storm and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a storm against a wall, like heat in a dry place. You subdue the noise of the foreigners as heat by the shade of a cloud. So the song of ruthless is ruthless. Let's try that again. So the song of the ruthless is put down. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow and aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over the all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the hand of the Lord will rest on his mountain, uh, on this mountain, and Moab shall be trampled down in his place. A straw is trampled down on, in a dunghill. Oh, I, sorry. Moab shall be trampled down in his place as straw is trampled down in a dunghill. And he will spread out his hands in the midst of it as a swimmer spreads out his hands to swim. But the Lord will lay low his, pomp, lay low his pompous pride together with the skill of his hands, and the high fortification of his walls he will bring down. Lay low and cast to the ground, to the dust. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, <clears throat> the understanding and interpretation of imagery is not always easy. Um, not always clear. My place to go, I guess, first is to look at what look at what the impression is that I'm getting from the words. What 
uh, what what I see in them um, before looking at commentaries. And, and you you here who join me, that's pretty much what you get is my impression of the words. Um, sometimes later I run across these texts and I go to commentaries and I find out that maybe my impression was not the first or the best. Still, it's an impression, right? And if the Spirit guides the reading of the Word, then the impression is part of the understanding. It's like going to a going to a museum, an art museum, and looking at the, the I was going to say paintings, but art takes on so many forms, and trying to understand what the artist is trying to tell you um, from the artwork on the wall. And you always are left with an impression of some kind, whether it's the one that the artist intended or not. Who knows? The artist knows. Or reading a reading a novel and, and then you you have that literature class in high school, right? Where you're supposed to read it and then what is the author trying to tell us by these mechanisms? Well, I have uh, seen interviews with authors where, where um, the interviewer shares with them some of the impressions from a college class on their text. And the instructor, the professor is saying, well, the author is using this technique to do this, 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 and this. And then the author hears what that man has said, what that professor has said. And he says, uh, the author says, I didn't mean that. That's not at all what I meant. But I guess that's the impression I got. But when we read the word, by faith in Christ and by the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are given an impression and that Spirit works on us through that word. The amazing thing about Scripture is you can read the same text again and again and again and have a different impression each time. And as long as that impression points you towards the promises of God in Christ Jesus, then likely that impression is correct. We'll put that over and let that go to voicemail. Um, so we are, we have read for two days now the destruction of the world. Uh, the earth is utterly broken, the earth is split apart, the earth is violently shaken, the earth staggers like a drunken man, sways like a hut. Um, on that day the Lord will punish the host of heaven and heaven and the kings of earth on earth. Right, heaven is the unseen places. That's the, 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 the fallen angels will receive their punishment. And, and the kings of the earth who uh, caused the strife will be punished. Shut up in a prison. That's hell. The moon confounded the sun ashamed. But the Lord of hosts is in charge. On Mount Zion and in Jerusalem. And his glory will be before, be before the elders. And, and uh, judgment comes. And the destruction of all things. And then Isaiah says, Lord, you are my God, and I will exalt you, and I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. Um, you ruined the fortified city. The foreigner's palace has, is a city no more, never to be rebuilt. Judgment comes, all things destroyed, but the Lord, our God, has a plan. You know, people like to say that, but it's true. God has a plan. Um, and that plan is the salvation of mankind, not through the working of man or the will of man, but through the will of God. And that will by which we have been saved, and somewhere I think that's written in the book of Hebrews, the will by which we are saved is Christ's, by his death and resurrection on the cross, in its empty tomb. Um, even, even the ability to have faith in him is given to us, and then we cling to it. We cling to that cross. And on the mountain, on this mountain, right, um, on this mountain, the Lord of, hosts race, Lord of hosts reigns on Mount Zion. And on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well-refined. 
It's the wedding feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which will have no end. Because he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the pall of death, the pall of sin, the veil that is spread over all the nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. Sorrow will be gone, mourning over sin. There will only be rejoicing. The reproach of his people, the, the iniquity of his people, he will take away from all the earth. The Lord has spoken, he will do it. It will be said on that day, this is our God. We have waited for him. Whether we, whether we wait here in the flesh, uh, in this world, as Paul says, um, or we uh, go to be with him to await the resurrection, those by faith in Christ will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Moab will be trampled like straw in a dung, dung pile. Um, Moab will spread out his hands in the midst of it as a swimmer spreads out his hands to swim, but the Lord will lay low his pompous pride. And everything will be cast down. But what remains is Christ. What remains is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and those who trust in him. Those who have been baptized into Christ and lived in faith towards him, enduring to the end. And we're given that strength through our Lord. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Lord God, Heavenly Father, in holy baptism you anointed us with the holy chrism and, see, and healed us all of all sin, making us little Christs who bear in our body your Son, our Savior. Continue to strengthen us by your Holy Spirit so that we may embody Christ in the world through our words and our actions. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning, Lord Jesus Christ, I marvel at your wondrous love for me, which is new again today. All throughout my life, I have been unfaithful to you. I have idolatrously chased my evil thoughts and desires. I have adulterously loved the things of the world more than I loved you. Uh, but I still have, but still you have chosen me. You have given yourself to death for me. You have cleansed me through the water and the word at my baptism. Thank you for making me part of your beautiful radiant bride, the church, which you purchased with your own blood. As your church, help us to live in the light of your cross, scatter the darkness of division, strife, hostility, grudges, stubbornness, laziness, apathy, and heresy that so often plague and hinder us. Let us bask in your merciful presence as we gather around your holy word and sacraments each week. Allow us to sorrow together, rejoice together, and forgive one another. Guard and protect me from neglecting and despising your word and your people. Give me a fervent desire to come to your church each week. Teach me to treasure your word and your sacrament. Let me hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Feed me with your life-giving sin, life-giving, sin-forgiving body and blood. Enable me to taste and see that you are good. 
Strengthen my faith. Help me to look to you alone for forgiveness, life, and salvation. This in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask your mercy, your blessing, and your assurance for those who suffer in body, mind, or soul. And especially this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Ezra, Deanna, and all who call upon your most holy name. Give them strength and confidence in the, in the true love that your Son has shown by his death and resurrection. And bring them into the faith that brings us, in the end, to you. Be with us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its, bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our daily devotions to a close for today. Uh, December 8th, Thursday. God's peace be with you. If you are in the area of Harshaw in North Wisconsin, 4.30 this evening, um, evening prayer uh, as we uh, consider Jesus as our priest. Um, and uh, following that, a simple soup supper. Um, Bonnie's making the soup tonight. It's it's uh, lemon lemon rice turkey soup. So God's peace be with you, and we will see you back here tomorrow, uh, Friday morning, for our daily devotions. God's peace.